Hi, this is Tori Wheel with the Oracle Technology Network. We're here live on the floor of DevNexus talking to members of the Java community. And I have the honor uh, to talk to Jakob Fain. Hi, Jakob. Hello, Tori. How are you? How are you doing? Fine, thanks. No complaints. Okay, good. So Jakob is a uh, Java champion. He's created some software companies. You're with Ferrata Systems, is that correct? Yeah, we have actually two Ferrata Systems and Surance V. Okay, great. So you've got software companies going. You've written several books, right? Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what's you've got some new books coming out? Uh, this year is the second edition of my Java book, Java Tutorial 24-Hour Trainer. Okay. And uh, actually, I fi just finished writing drafts for the Java for Kids book. Oh, that's so wonderful. To teach kids Java, right. It should be printed in uh, June by No Starch Press. Okay, so keep an eye out for that so you can teach your kids Java and get them all started on the best best technology in the world. So um, we've had a nice merge between uh, Java and IoT lately, right? There's right. been a lot of interest in it, and I know there's been a lot of developers out there getting a Raspberry Pi and hacking around with it. But you're here to tell us that there's a big difference between a homebrew application, right, with a device you're playing with, but something um, at a commercial level, right? Uh, yes, actually, not. it's not like I'm telling you what to do and how to approach our IoT. I'm just trying to say that people who are playing with uh, devices, with hardware, trying to use Java in there, it's a first step, but uh, from the commercial perspective, there is so many devices out there already on the market. Uh -huh. And we uh, developers who create business applications, we try to find a fit for an existing commercial product that supports IoT into our business workflow. Okay, so, all right, so tell me, give me some examples of some commercial IoT that's out there that you've worked commercial with. Commercial is everywhere now. For example, cars. Like right. BMW, for example, connect to drive. Uh, Pirelli, that uh, tire manufacturer, they put sensors right inside the tires. They check the, uh, the tires condition, the temperature, uh, if it's worn out or no. Uh, medical devices, agriculture, they check if the soil is wet enough. Uh, oh, well, yeah, uh, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, a lot of things over there. Agri irrigation, uh, turn on or people trust internet weather more, you know, than just looking in the window if it's raining. So the internet tells if it's raining and the device is turning on or off. Ah. So there's lots of different me me medicine. So it's out there. It's out there. So how do I as a developer start thinking about IoT in the commercial space? Like what are the things I have to consider? First of all, you need to try to bring together all these different devices created by different vendors. Right. Who, who initially didn't think about each other, right? So, and we need to find some standards, maybe some standard protocol, how to integrate all these different devices into our business okay. applications. Right, right. So, um, in your presentation, you're talking about OF and IoT, is that in, correct? In our, in our presentation, actually, I did this presentation a couple of times. I usually even demonstrate live the devices. But the point is, one of our companies that is called Surance Bay. We are in the insurance business. Okay. And in particular, people can come uh, visit applicants who wants to buy life insurance, for example. Right. And these uh, paramedics need to measure blood pressure. They need to measure weight. Of course, it can be done, and it's still being done manually right. by typing. But it's a source of errors. So we try to see if we can fit into that workflow. If a, if a paramedic who comes to a house of a potential insurer, insurer no, not insurance, what do you call <laughs> him? <laughs> a guy who will get an insurance, right? Right, right. So they would measure the, take the measurements, the measurement goes immediately to the vendor's device. Ah, and, and then, then it's going to be accurate, and then it's going to go right to the people and who need then, it. And, and then by miracle, it's jumped into the right field into our business application. The same thing with, with scales, for example. Right. So it was like a POC which worked fine. So the vendor of the blood pressure monitor had no idea about the vendor of the scales. Right, right. But so both of them are enabled, IoT enabled. So you've got, or you've had some experience in this area 
So you know how to bring all these things together, Correct. right? Correct. Or you have an example of it, right? Right. So the, do you want to share that with us? I can show you the, the oh. big picture diagram. I have okay. a long presentation, but at least let's see something. Okay, so we're just going to get a flavor of your presentation right. here. Right, uh, okay. a little piece of it. So if you look at this uh, diagram, right. on the right-hand side, you have different servers by different vendors. And actually, these days, uh, it's in a way, it's similar to the uh, uh, 90s, I'd say, when the web services were uh, created. Why they were created? Because people had tons of information and they wanted to give an API for developers who would access the data the way they wanted. Similarly now, if a vendor creates a device, they also publish an API. Typically, right. it's a REST service, and mm -hmm. of course, Java supports it. Besides that, the access to the, to the server, that you see on the right-hand side, I see two different, Fitbit and iHealth Lab, for example. So if our application in the middle, my server, I call it, wants to get some data from Fitbit, right. which in my case, it was the scales, or with iHealth Lab's server, which is in my case was the blood pressure monitor. So we need to, A, have an API, REST API we are using at this. Basically, it's pretty standard way of accessing data. And B, we need to authenticate that this server in the middle is the trustworthy application. So for, for that, OAuth 2 authentication fits pretty nicely. So uh, when we started developing this application, what we did, we applied for a client ID and a secret. We applied to Fitbit. We went uh, in there, developer okay. side, this is an API, and we filled in a, an application saying that we are this middle, uh, the server in the middle, name it whatever you want, and please assign for us unique client ID and give us a secret. Secret is basically a password, for, but for the application or for the person. And we'll also give you a URL to redirect requests if we make it. So if the user logs on the screen on the left, right. with his credential, the user has an account, the, user, the owner of the device, the blood pressure monitor. If he will log in to Fitbit, for example, his login, then Fitbit would redirect to my server the request, giving us a special authorization token Ah. And it will redirect to the page that we want. Right. So you're authorizing yourself to each other, right? So, right. To, the, so to the device and back, right? Yes. And we can create a web page that will be served by my server that will have two fields on the same page, one of them being weight, and the other one is blood pressure. But whoever look who the user of this page, or maybe it's a part of the business application, they don't know that technically we go through my server, and we authorize through different uh, commercial vendors of IoT devices, and we bring collect data together. So, and it's it's a pretty safe communication because if you will see this green arrow or on the right, this is typically what you're buying. You're buying a device, and you have a smartphone. Device talks to the server. Device talks to the smartphone, and this is how it works. But we want to to integrate it into a different picture. Like wow. you see on the screen. That's and it works. That's very nice. So um, you've worked a lot of this out. That's pretty amazing, right? Yeah. And uh, it's, it's not only myself, it's our <laughs> team, of course. But Java is in the middle. Java, it's as so stable as it could be. Right. It does a on good job. On the front end is JavaScript, not going anywhere. Actually, we, to be honest with you, we use Google's language called Dart, which automatically generates JavaScript. But it's a web application, deployed as a web application. Great. So it works perfect. Great. So if you want to find more information, I know you can go out to the Oracle Technology Network. We have a lot of information about IoT and the embedded space. And of course, you can reach out to Yakov. He's a Java champion. He would love to talk to you about this. He is, he's an expert, and he, he's an enthusiastic member of the community. Oh, yeah. That's and right. he's always here to help us out. So thank you very much for coming by. Thank I you, really Tori. appreciate it. Nice, nice being here. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.